If you're a guitar nerd and have been on YouTube at all lately, you have recently seen a lot of videos about the Guinness Book of World Records, world record for the world's largest pedal board. It was broken and I got to be a part of that. On today's episode, I'm gonna take you along for the ride from my perspective on how it all went down and I'm gonna give away one of the actual pedal boards that was used to set the record. I'm gonna do that at the end of the episode, but I'm aware that several of you just skip. You just skip the outros. There's lots of things that I work really hard on. I put my heart and my soul into those outros and you're just not gonna get giveaways or have the answers that you need. I have metadata to prove this. I have your IP address and I will hack you so bad. A few months ago, Rob Scallon, an ingenious YouTuber who I personally love, one of my favorite videos of his is where he goes into a racquetball court with his friends and acoustic guitars and creates the effect of dotted eighth delay with no guitar effects. It's really crazy. We'll link that in the description below. He gets a hold of me because he's teamed up with Sweetwater to try and attempt breaking the Guinness Book of World Records record for the largest pedal board ever assembled. When I got that message, I knew at that moment I had to go, and that's what I did. I went and joined the crew to help break this record. Everyone met up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, the home of Sweetwater, but this event was so top secret that we actually had to meet at the Clyde Theater, a venue across town that Sweetwater owns. None of the employees could know, none of the sales guys, and Sweetwater has a lot of staff. So this was really fun. We show up at the theater and we go in and all of us are kind of wondering what this is gonna be like. And we really don't know what we're getting into. So what are some of your concerns with this scale of a project? Falling into the gravitational field of so many heavy pedals. There are logistical concerns here. Either it works great and we work through all of them, or we totally crash and burn and it's a great video. I think either way, complete win. <laughs> I think the problem here is that we don't have enough distortion pedals. I hope that nothing blows off, uh, no one goes deaf, no one gets electrocuted. Realistically, I think it's going to be hard to fix the noise. I mean, you're going to have a lot of noise. What are your realistic logistical concerns about this project? Having the right wiring. Ryan, what are your concerns here at this point? Uh, the amount of time it's going to take. If it doesn't work, it's Rob's fault. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> you can just that put all the blame, disclaimer. all the blame this way. For the next couple of hours as a team, we just unbox pedals. One of the rules is that every pedal used in breaking this record has to be something that's on the retail market, a brand new pedal. So no vintage or weird stuff. It just had to be things that any one of us could go buy. So vendors like myself, Earthquaker, MXR, Wampler, etc., we all just donated to this event. So we're opening all the pedals and we have to make a decision. And that decision is how do we wire these up? One of the rules is that it has to be in series or in parallel. So we choose series and we decide to wire it as if it was one large single pedal board, meaning we put the drives together, we put the modulations together, the delays, etc. We group things by the effect type. There's not enough fuzz, just saying. Compressor pile yeah, down here. Yeah, where's the compressor pile? and we do it on 34 temple pedal boards. So 319 pedals across 34 boards in series. Now, mounting the pedals to the boards was insane. Robert's putting these back plates on like a master sensei. Yeah. We had to pull off all the rubber feet. We had to pull off the rubber backings. We had to prep each pedal for the temple plate. It took a long time. After attaching all the pedals to the boards or board, we now need to run the guitar cable. So the guitar cable of choice here was the EBS PCF patch cables. These are some really nice flat right angle cables and it was really exciting to use these. I'd never seen them before, but I loved the idea. And we just start putting them on the boards. About halfway through wiring all the boards, hours and hours of, of routing things through, removing some of the pedals and adjusting. I look over at Ryan of Temple because they're kind of leading the crew in wiring that element of the boards and I say hey did we get the cable tester did we test these cables Ryan looks at me and he goes 
It was just moving so quick. We just didn't have time. We're just putting them on. We're just gonna see if it works. And I was like, oh no, this is not good. But guess what? Not one single failure of this EBS cable, which is completely unheard of. This is 500 feet of cable. It's a ton of patch cables and not one failure. So EBS, you did a good job on these cables. Next up, we had to power this giant pedal board, 34 pedal boards making one large board. So we needed 34 power supplies that would handle everything from a simple fuzz to a really powerful Strymon digital pedal. And it was a big, big concern. Now, the humor of this is that Ryan at Temple had just developed a brand new modular power supply that slides into his boards. Now, this is ideal because we're having all these boards, a lot of people building, and it kept it really clean. It was an organized and really neat way to power these pedals. But the concern was this power supply has never been on the market. It hasn't really been tested by real players out on the road. And that was really alarming, but it worked flawlessly. And I'm still in disbelief. I've used a lot of power supplies. I'm very picky. I'm very outspoken about pedal power. And this thing blew me away. Now to put in perspective how crazy it was to power all this, the wall of marshals behind us with the 412 cabs, that's only 700 watts and it covers the whole stage. This pedal board was over a thousand watts. Calculating each one of these little pedals at 0.05 milliamps times 333, that's 150, uh, 1500 million gigawatts, I think. Something like that. At any rate, more power needed to power the pedals than the Marshall stacks. These power supplies were flawless. So big shout out to Temple and their high five power supply. I'm blown away. Now that all the boards are put together, the pedals are on them, the cables are wired and power is in place, we need to test them just like you would with one pedal board. But this time we're testing a lot of boards. So we put them in series as if this one large board was a normal board. So instead of a single overdrive pedal, you have a couple overdrive boards and you just go in series. At the end, there's two or three reverb boards, delay boards. It's just a big, giant, obnoxiously amazing pedal board. And the first goal is for Rob to plug in his guitar at the input and let's see what the clean signal sounds like. This is what the board sounds like. We're all headed into the twilight zone. <laughs> this is actually funny because we realize it's hard to know if some pedals are on or off. Tr there's a tremolo or... I hear something thumping. Right here. No. We had some funny instances where like you hear an effect and you're trying to run it down, but you're not sure where it's at. Oh, the TR2, no, never mind. I'm crazy. He's strumming. We figure it out. We get everything off and the clean tone is there. We realize there's a couple cables that needed pushed in better. Right here, right here. Some things like that, but we really had no problems. Now, because there are so many pedals, there's obviously not pure signal strength. There was a good mix of true bypass pedals and buffered pedals, but when you're multiplying this many circuits on top of each other, a buffer's never perfect, so you have this this degradation of just audio, and you know, it's a little quieter than it should be, so we kind of left a little boost on at the end, and it was great. It was a good, clean signal. Rob played a bunch of Primus riffs as we're warming up, and it was, it was pretty fun. All the pedal boards are assembled together into the one large board and everything's bypassing signal and every effect is working. But to set the record, we actually have to go through some protocol. So one of the first things we had to do is Rob has to stand there with his instrument and play through each pedal on and off. I can't touch the pedal, no one can. He has to activate it but I have to be there along with a couple other people as industry professionals to judge the fact that he's doing it correctly. And it was at this point that I realized I am an industry professional, doggone it. And then he had to perform a live song. Like 20 people just showed up in the theater. I don't know, they found them somewhere. And Rob performs one of his songs. A few of us sat in the floor with certain pedal boards and used them kind of as instruments. So as he's playing, we orchestrated activating effects in certain parts. It's pretty crazy. 
At the end, it sounded like a weird Radiohead B-side. It was fantastic. There are just certain factors here that made this work. Having the right people, having Brian Wampler, Robert Keeley, Ryan from Temple and his crew, this absolutely would not have worked because just the way that the Temple boards go together, the power supply, everything was so incredible. Uh, and Natalie from Sweetwater, she carried the weight of this entire process, the organization. So Natalie, you're a superhero. This thing was incredible and we basically set the record in a day and a half with no problems. I still can't believe it. I need a shirt that says there were no problems. I don't, I don't know how that happened because when I build a board with four pedals on it, everything's broken. Before I left for Indiana, I had to make Rob a custom pedal. So we took a picture of him off the internet, kind of the iconic Rob Scallon image with his hat. And we made a one of one, super duper ultra limited Angry Rob. It was an Angry Charlie, but because it had his icon on it, I swear to you it sounds different, possibly better. It was really fun. When everything was said and done, it took 319 pedals, 34 pedal boards, 1,000 watts of pedal power supply, 12 people, two days. We had a drone, the guitarist from Rush, and just, it was crazy. It was amazing, and we set the world record. I'm so happy about this. You know why I'm happy? Because they even gave me a certificate. Look at this. Will you look at this? I have like a thing. Like an official thing. My kids now finally respect me. On today's world record, record time, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers greatest hits. I don't think this record set a record, but let me just explain to you something. This man has more amazing hit songs than anyone I've ever thought of, probably. I honestly, I can't, the Beatles? Maybe the Beatles? I don't know. Listen to these song names. American Girl, Breakdown, Refugee, Don't Do Me Like That, Don't Come Around Here, I Won't Back Down, Running Down a Dream, Free Falling, Learning to Fly, it's crazy. This record's amazing. If you ever got to see him live, it's just one song after another that's like a huge hit, and he wouldn't even play some of his huge hits. Anyway, you gotta check this out. If you don't know who Tom Petty is, this is a place to start. If you do know who he is, you need to go back and just appreciate these songs again. And in the comments below, tell me your favorite artist that just has continual quality hits. It's amazing. I'm just still so impressed. So many great songs. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I wanna leave you with five pedal board building tips for when you're building your board. Number one is be patient. It can be really exciting getting all these pedals and all these things and you wanna do it too quick. Just take your time and do it right and it will pay off. Number two is actually lay out your signal path, power supply and the cables you're actually gonna use just on the carpet, on the floor, make sure everything works and then copy that onto the board. I can't tell you how many times I've built a board and did something wrong and had to undo something to move a pedal. That's really, really frustrating. Number three is signal strength. So here's a challenge for you. When you build your board and you set it out or you're doing this test on the carpet to see if you like your effects chain, I want you to take your guitar cable straight from your guitar and plug it into your amp. Don't shred blues or whatever. Just strum some chords and listen to how they ring out. Listen to the bass and the high end. Then plug into that signal chain, and if it doesn't sound as full and as big as right into the amp, you need to add a couple buffers in there. I would put one at the front, and then if you have a bigger board, maybe 10 pedals, a front and a back, and that'll fix that signal loss thing that you're dealing with. Number four is get good cables. Do not skimp on cheapo cables, please. I beg you, cables are very important. It literally carries your guitar signal. So get good cables, you will not regret it. I really preferred soldered cables. Some people like the solderless kits. I'm not a huge fan. There are some newer things out there that work well, but just do your digging around. I'll do an episode later on some of that. And last but not least is the most important factor as you've heard me talk about in this video, power. Please get an isolated power supply. And let me give you a hint. 
Just because a company says isolated power supply doesn't mean it's isolated. There's a lot of stuff on Amazon. There's a lot of weird things that say isolated. And all that means to those people is that each output is separate from the other. It's not actually isolated. So I really, really ask you, go get a good Pedal Power 2 Plus get Ryan's pedal supply for the temple boards. There's some really good stuff out there. Um, that's your five tips. I wanna thank Sweetwater, they're epic. This would have never happened. I mean, the amount of money and resource they put into setting this record, really, really amazing. I'd love to say a big, huge thanks to all my friends, Ryan, Robert, Brian, all these people. Everything was made possible by them, and Natalie, just amazing. Let's give this board away. Uh, Rob, who also needs probably the biggest credit because it's all his idea. He named this board the Kirk Hammett Special. It is five wah pedals. It has the Temple Power Supply. You've got the Eddie Van Halen wah pedal. You've got the Jerry Cantrell. You've got a 535Q, a Hot Tone, Crybaby. If you want a wah pedal, this is it. If you play Metallica, if you just like making noise, this is the board for you. So go to the description below and follow those rules to enter this giveaway. And also be sure to check out the JHS Show website. That link is below. We have the new shirts and stuff on there. If you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. Until next week, have a good time. Just go set a record, a personal record, whatever that is. See ya. It doesn't matter what you like. So I have um, Robert Keeley and Brian Wampler, and we did an official Tube Screamer count. 30, 34. 34, the bonsai was nine of them. They allowed that. It is 10% of the pedal collection, isn't it? At 33, 34, that is 10% of. 10% of the Guinness Book of World Records pedal board is Tube Screamers. 10% yeah. of our pedal line yes. are, are Tube Screamers. screamers. Uh, it's, it, right. it's never ending. It's time for us to design our three-in-one pedal. Yeah, yeah. three-in-one pedal. The three-in-one pedal is a great thing. So now we got all the pedals to look at out there, 333 of them or something like uh -huh. that. Nine Tube Screamers, nine Klons. I have a name, we call it the Triple Crown. Racehorse theme. There you go. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. I've had I'm that for about it. 10 years. <laughs> I had to pull it out of a file. <laughs> I was like, you got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Triple crown. Triple crown. There it is. Just a bunch of tube screamers. <laughs>